Picture this, an intense darkness that descends upon the earth, lasting not just hours, but three days and three nights. The air heavy with pestilence, and an eerie quiet that envelopes everything. The enemies of God, they say, will meet their fate during this universal blackout. The air itself teeming with malevolent demons in horrifying forms. Unbelievable, right? Mystics like Blessed Anna Maria Tighe and Marie Julie Jehenny dared to peer beyond the veil of time, revealing visions that sent shivers down your spine. They spoke of blessed candles that defy reason, flickering defiantly through the darkness, shielding the chosen few from the forces of evil. Fast forward to the 21st century, where a Brazilian Catholic priest known as Father Oliveira steps into the spotlight. His dream allows us to mine gems of insight that suggest that the three days of darkness are not just a distant prophecy, but a blueprint for navigating the challenges of our present lives. A roadmap to salvation, if you will, that beckons us to turn away from selfishness and embrace the light. But this revelation isn't just about individuals, it extends to families and societies too. It's a wake-up call to shut out the noise of the outside world and focus on the core values that truly matter. It's about rising above the chaos and finding our way back to the path of righteousness. So, my fellow seekers of truth, let's dive into this electrifying conversation. Let's explore the depths of the unknown and emerge with a renewed sense of purpose. Like, subscribe, and share this video to join the ranks of those who are embracing the enigma of the three days of darkness and embarking on a journey that will leave an indelible mark on history. Imagine a happy couple who loves God and unites in marriage and starts to raise a family. They have an objective of raising a God-loving family with generations and generations of faithful grandchildren. Now imagine that five years into the marriage the husband becomes an alcoholic and starts an affair. He scandalizes his children and encourages sin and lack of faithfulness in his wife. He has rejected his faith in God and believes the world is ultimately meaningless, and you just need to find fun wherever you can. Now how would the wife attempt to move forward in the faith and help to affect the blessed family for generations to come that praises God in her situation? In this analogy, Imagine the husband can represent a literal husband with the collection of people and disturbances being the parts of his collected person, or we can use the husband as an analogy for the government, or a religious authority, or the hierarchy. How does the wife go forward in this situation? Metaphorically this is the state we find ourselves in at the onset of the three days of darkness. In this analogy the quest is to hold through the tumultuous events without losing your own faith or letting your children's faith be lost and hopefully recovering your marriage. So first, let's listen to Father Oliviera's dream of the three days, and then let's take it apart to unravel what the dream means for our everyday lives. Hint. Most of us have a lot of progress to make before we can count ourselves as secure around the safety of the blessed candles. I assure you if you listen to the end, you will be challenged with new ways of thinking and approaching life in the years before you. The dream always started the same way. I was standing by the door of a house. I was outside. This indicates to us that those inside the house are ready but the three days happen when we are not living appropriately. But an important point is that you are not outside in the middle of nowhere. Those blessed to be saved through surviving the three days are those who are standing by the door. They live in such a way that they are close or wayward but still are in the vicinity of the faith. I was outside, looking up to the sky. Those who are blessed with the chance of salvation through the purgation of the three days of darkness are not where they should be, inside the house, but they are looking up to the sky. In other words, their attention is focused on solid things in life and things of meaning, not living with their face looking at the ground in front of their nose like someone who lives for pleasures alone. At one point, I saw the sun disk, reddened, but in a tone different from that of dusk or dawn. This is reminiscent of Luke 12 verse 56. You fools! You know how to interpret the weather signs of the earth and sky, 
but you don't know how to interpret the present times. The noticing of the detail in the color and appearance of the disk of the sun shows us that the one who will be spared in the three days will be one who is able to interpret the present times. This blessing requires a gift from God to be able to see the signs of the times. The sun was close to the horizon. This indicates that a full metaphorical day has gone before. These signs in the sky happen in the evening, after much experience and many events. In terms of society and the family, these events occur at the waning stage of a culture, after years of complex successes and failures. Now the sun is going down and darkness is descending, metaphorically speaking. There was something like fire in the sky, with a color between bright red and blue. Movements are arising in society, in the culture. When you look at news, popular culture, and trends in religious beliefs you see fire, or in other words, extreme volatility and anger, defense and offense, camps and movements. There were things resembling clouds, but as I had never seen them before, they looked like fire to me. Clouds soften the light and dampen the sun. They are a dampening element in the light and temperature of the day. But these clouds are a fire. This is a very alarming thing to see and it indicates even the calming foundations and cultural bulwarks, such as the schooling, the music, are a fire causing delusion and volatility in those who take part. Then I saw many birds. Birds are the denizens of the sky. You are seeing activity and a lot of bustle in the news cycle and the culture. It is not calm and seasonal but news and popular culture is teeming with leadership figures. I remember first seeing them all flying in the same direction. Then a shocking thing happens. Where in the past they would disagree with each other, now they are all going in the same direction. Everyone is saying the same things and has the same sentiments and the same takes on everything. There is shockingly lacking diversity of opinion. Then it got dark too quickly. Now you start to notice manipulation in the culture. Claims of conspiracy get more common and people getting caught in deception happens with frequency but then it all quiets down and you stop seeing any of this digging and clarity and information is well prepared for you before you get it and you know it. In a manner similar to when a storm is approaching. You realize that the organic nature of your relationship with family or society is no longer loose and friendly, and soon there will be acts of deception and grabs for power. The silence and lack of information is the tell. At that moment, there was always someone close to me, the person also varied throughout the dreams, who asked the question, what is happening? A very important point. If you experience this yourself and nobody else does you may be deluded but you are noting that there is a small number of people realizing that there are signs in the times. My answer was always the same as well, it's starting. The confirmation of two witnesses makes a quorum. It felt very cold at that point. You will start to be noticed that you are not fitting in and will start to lose friends. In addition, demons which are real will have already seen you. Each of those who are not going along with those who are looking down at the ground stand out to them very quickly and they begin to bring you anxiety and threats and dreams and through people who are their followers to go along with the crowds. Then I saw myself already inside the house. But just not running away from the house and joining the excited crowds in the family or society will immediately put you inside the house after a period of trial. The very act of holding strong puts the house around you. Someone was boarding the windows with wood, carton, blankets, etc. The materials I was using at this point also varied over the years, but the task was always the same. We were closing all the openings in the place. The way to protect the house, the faith of your person, your family, your community in the time that is upon us is to board the windows, shut out external influences. The signs in the sky in the first part of the vision indicates that we are in a certain situation in which propaganda and other forms of implicit and explicit manipulation are exceeding the possibility of not falling for them if one only lets themselves be exposed to these influences. Therefore at times like these one must block all forms of external influence, light and imagery, 
from entering the house. There were several people with me, all of whom I knew. The only ones you can unite with in these times are people who are of similar total commitment to the faith. Under normal circumstances you would prize evangelization through diversity, but during this onslaught of darkness, all of the agents of the culture carry with them the multifarious forms of propaganda from outside of your secure shelter if they are not completely on board in your mission and commitment to service to God. They were helping to close windows and doors, carrying food or blankets from one side or the other. The profile of all the people in the house must be that of service. They must be actively helping to reinforce foundations of the faith. In terms of an individual, a person cannot be divided by trends, fashion, seemingly innocuous but secular television, news or friends and family. The profile of those in the house is that they are all actively working together for fortification and support for survival. Always in this part of the dream, someone started to question everything saying things like, this is not necessary. It's an exaggeration. They've already said on television that this was going to happen. Without a doubt this type of disruptive opposition to the outer culture will result in people questioning and sometimes actively opposing the steps needed for your safety. The method of assault will always be along the lines of questioning the need for the work the team is undertaking. And I always ended ordering them to continue doing the work. Your response must always be to continue work and oppose the opposition coming up against the fortification. Opponents must either be removed from the house metaphorically or brought on board for the sake of survival in these dire times. Looking at my reflection in a window and noticing my white hair and beard. To be inside of a house as we have already discussed indicates prior commitment, follow through, work, trying to stay near the faith. This can be symbolized as experience and age. Those who are fortifying, Organizing and maintaining the houses are symbolized by wisdom and age. And whenever we were almost done closing everything, some acquaintance arrived at the last minute, and great relief was felt. What wonderful joy that while you cannot unite with those outside, those who are not 100% in their commitment to preserving and bringing forward the faith. You have hope that those that see your resolve may join you inside the house even if in the beginning they were not willing. From that point on, everything was very dark. Now even inside the metaphorical house, the structured and united closed community of the faithful, it is hard to tell right from wrong. I couldn't make out the faces of everyone in the house. Even inside the metaphorical house the deep confusion and disruption of ideology makes even the closest and most united of fellow survivors support for each other weaken. The clarity of the unity is weakened. You can imagine St. Thomas More in the prison cell and his family even though they were in part sharing his metaphorical house were both physically and mentally isolated from him under the stress of the oppressive regime. Or imagine the priest's block in Dachau concentration camp in occupied Poland depicted in the ninth day. Another great example of this time in the night in the three days. Everyone is battling with their own hunger, their own thirst. They can barely help themselves from resorting to animalistic activity such as theft from each other let alone be a support in the faith for each other. A room full of saints and almost no support. The number seemed to be between 20 and 30 people. This statement gives us an idea of the number of people in one of these metaphorical houses. A handful or a few handful and that's all that can be sustained faithfully for those you can trust in times like this. A light was turned on, always in the center. The first time I dreamed, there were candles, about five or six, large and small placed in the center of the room. At other times it was a fireplace, this was repeated a lot, but always with candles in front, or emergency lights along with candles. This is the lifeline. The light, sometimes referred to as blessed and pure material candles, are the heart of the faith, the holy scriptures, the sacrament of the altar, the saints, the doctors of the church, the traditions, the dreams and visions of the members of the small group. 
The group's only light is in the daily repeating of these candles, these light sources, frequenting their clarity in the darkness that aims to subvert and unite all minds under the banner of the beast or animalistic living. In the third part of the dream everyone gathered in the dark, with some small light in the middle. As it gets later and later, you must converge closer and closer around the sources of light described in the listed under the last point. The darker the night, the colder the air, the closer you must come huddled around the foundations and illuminations of the faith. Everyone had a rosary in hand. There is no one who will survive these metaphorical three days without the help of heaven through praise and supplication increasing as the darkness falls. Someone always said at this moment that, it's too cold, and my answer was the same, it's already started, we better pray and keep silent. When the darkness is at its depths the demons will even be manifesting through the internal communication of the members of these small groups so increase prayer, and cease meaningless talk, support each other, and make every word meaningful, and let silence reign in the air when prayers are not heard. After that moment came the worst part of the dream. I began to hear noises like lightning and thunder, sometimes it sounded like bombs going off, strong wind and whistling. Here is the most horrible part of the metaphorical three days. The calamity in the lives all around, the horrible punishments coming from the powers of hell represented by repressive governments, as well as the pleading to join every worldly cause or to get involved in social action increases. Do not join the political battleground. Through the few cracks that remained, you could see the light flashing from these rays or bombs, it is difficult to know where the light was coming from. Flashes are coming from outside meaning that you will be tempted that there is safety here or there outside of the safety of the metaphorical household and defenses, but as stated there is no way of telling where they are coming from. They act as the sirens call beckoning poor sailors out into the depths. The fear we felt was great at that time. This is a time of total isolation other than the small amount of warmth and light still available from your faithful remnant in your metaphorical house. That which is outside seems so overwhelmingly powerful. Stay close to your sources of light and pray to God for protection. There was a tremor in the house through the floor and walls. Now at the darkest part of the night the house itself is shaking, the lights are flickering, even the efficacy of your own lights are being put into question and the stability of your structure seems inadequate. Don't give up. The sequence continued in a disturbing way. This is not the triumphal battle every young boy dreams about when he imagines fighting for the good guys against the bad guys. Every instant is discomfort, agony, trembling sadness and loss. Don't give up. I started to hear screams and a lot of noise outside. Here you will start to be presented with something like hostage situations. Those you have known will be presented to your consciousness as needing you to abandon your safety to rescue them in their horror and destruction. This is the dangerous siren's call to save the world. The only part of the world that will be saved in these metaphoric days is that part of the world that is entirely committed through loss of everything for God alone. Going out to join the half-hearted or the uncommitted is certain doom. As if a lot of people were running through the streets. The commission and the activity will seem insane. People losing control and acting in rash ways and condemning and committing to hatred will reign all around you on all sides. There were gunshots, things breaking, people screaming. You will be presented with coercion to yourself as well as you will witness it happening to others. Threats of violence for abandoning your light and the safety of your house. Sounds of animals such as pigs, horses and oxen. You will be able to detect the debasement of people outside of the metaphorical house. They will be acting in ways you would never have imagined you would have seen them acting in this deep darkness of night as they are bent on their rage-filled cause. If I could describe this sound as that sound of hell, I wouldn't hesitate to call it that way. Doubtless this is a taste of hell you are hearing outside. Pay as little attention to it as possible and do not engage with it. At this moment, someone always approached the window, as if wanting to spy on what was going on outside the house. As stated there will be great temptation to help others, 
follow possible sources of light, join movements. Do not let yourself or those in your family community approach these metaphorical windows. I would get up and immediately say, stay away from the windows, don't look out. Commitment to the safety of the lights and the isolation of the house must be reinforced, and you will be required to pull those on the inside back from investigating or trying to join what is happening outside. The dream always ended the same way. I was gathered with some people, around a small light, locked in a house, with this hell going on outside, everyone looking at the candlelight. Sitting on a small stool, I kept saying to myself, we only have to endure three days, in three days it will pass. I never dreamed beyond this moment. Either I woke up earlier, or at that very moment. Three days indicates a complete time. This period has a beginning signaled by the signs listed in the first part of the dream, and it has an end signified by total isolation from the manipulation of the propaganda state propaganda community outside of the metaphorical house. There is a beginning and an end. Reach the end without being subsumed into the world by drawing closer to the sources of light and keeping away from the boarded and covered windows during these most treacherous of times.